a 20-year-old woman is taking over-the-counter diphenhydramine for severe hay fever. Which of the following adverse effects is she most likely to report? Option A. Increase in bladder tone. B. Nausea. C. Nervousness and anxiety. D. Sedation. Diphenhydramine is coming under the class of medication called antihistamines. Antihistamines for allergies, also known as H1 blockers, are medications that are primarily used to treat allergic reactions, such as urticaria, angioedema, and allergic rhinitis. These conditions are related to an increased release of histamine. Now, H1 blockers work by blocking the effects of histamine in tissues that have histamine-1 receptors, thereby alleviating symptoms of allergic reactions. These medications work by reversibly inhibiting H1 receptors and they are subdivided into two main groups, first-generation H1 blockers and second-generation H1 blockers. First-generation H1 blockers include medications like diphenhydramine, chlorpheniramine, diminhydronate, cyproheptadine, doxylamine, hydroxyzine, meclizine, promethazine etc. These medications are primarily used to treat motion sickness and allergic reactions, such as urticaria, angioedema, and allergic rhinitis. But, since they have high lipid solubility, these medications can easily cross the blood-brain barrier and block H1 receptors in the brain. This way, first-generation H1 antihistamines can cause cognitive side effects like sedation. Finally, Common side effects of first-generation H1 blockers can be subdivided into antihistaminic effects, such as sedation, increased appetite, and weight gain, antimuscarinic effects, or atropine-like side effects, such as dilated pupils, blurry vision, and dry mouth, and alpha-blocking effects, like orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. Second-generation H1 blockers include medications, like cetirizine, desloratadine, fexofenadine, levocetirazine, loratadine etc. Just like the first generation, second generation H1 blockers are primarily used to treat allergic reactions, but since they have far less lipid solubility than the first generation, they cause no or less cognitive side effects and antimuscarinic side effects. So the second generation is preferable to the first generation H1 blockers. Therefore the answer is option D. If you find this video helpful, share it with others who may find it helpful too. Subscribe Medbook for more videos like this and thanks for watching.